uh, there. Well, listen, um, did you feel God's presence this morning? You know, I, I mean, sometimes, sometimes we kind of walk into uh, church on autopilot. Have you ever been there? You know, life on autopilot, right? I mean, we, we've all been drawn there at one time or another where we're just kind of going through the motions um, and, and not really focusing. We are going to church. We are going to worship together. We are going to celebrate what God has done. He is alive, right? So, so sometimes we kind of come on autopilot. And look, I, I've been there as well. There's been plenty, plenty of times, um, even as a pastor, <clears throat> where I have walked into environments and things and been on autopilot. And um, I just want to encourage you, there's something that God has for us every time we get together. And there are things that there's realities, we'll talk about this in a minute, but there's realities to um, worshiping in His presence and something about celebrating together where God's presence comes down in a powerful way and our focus has changed, the problems that we have brought with us, how many brought some problems, right? Yeah, because you're breathing, right? And so, so you've brought things, but you come to church and you begin to worship the Lord, and all of a sudden, as you begin to give everything over to God, all those problems begin to kind of fade. They fade away because your focus is on the true reality, and that's on Christ. And so we've been talking a little bit about that over the last couple of weeks, um, the importance of truth. We talked about twisting the truth last week. Today we're talking about living the truth, and I'm talking about this, you know, idea of reality, um, sometimes we have this kind of thought come through our mind, is this really happening? Okay, you have certain experiences that you can think of on the good side and the not so good side of, is this really, is this really happening right now? Or, is this really happening right now? Or, is this really happening right now? Right, right, where, where you know, it could be like, the dishwasher quit. How many, like for you, the dishwasher quits and life is over, right? Or, or the washing machine quits and it's like the world is coming to an end, okay? I mean, if you're like us, I mean, we're doing a load of laundry every day, sometimes too. I mean, dishes, you know, every day, you know, or there's a serious backup. I, I'm, I'm breathing the same air you are, Okay, so I know that we bump up against these things, and so there's, there's these realities, you know, is this, really, is this really happening? So what do we do? If you're a guy in this place and something breaks, oftentimes you'll kick it. You'll kick it, Does, you know, that'll help. Anyhow, not usually. It hasn't worked. It only works in Back to the Future uh, when you hit something. So all that to say... Um, that we go through these things in life, is this really happening? You know, when, when you're engaged, is this really happening? This is happening. And then you're getting closer to the wedding date, and this is build, 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 build. Sometimes there's some stress, 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 stress uh, in there as well, but there's elation, and there's like, yes, this is, this is really happening. And you have these moments where you're like pinching yourself like, this, this is happening, this is really, this is really happening. So there's these realities, some we like, some we don't like, that we experience. And there's realities when we're following the Lord that God wants you to experience. Christ wants you to experience these realities. But the enemy tries to wiggle his way in there and to get you off focus, to get you off target, to get you in the dumps so that you can't really focus on the realities that there are as you follow Jesus Christ. And as we begin to talk about it, you begin to understand. I mean, there's certain things as a follower of Jesus Christ, certain realities that you've given your life to the Lord and and your focus is not the same, but the enemy wants to pull you back into the old way. He wants to pull you back into the gutter. He wants to get your mind off of what has truly happened in your life and get you focused on all the circumstances around you so that you cave and so that you are ineffective, so that you are asleep to the realities of God 
in your life and how powerful the Holy Spirit is in you. And so here's what we're talking about and kind of peeking into a little bit as we get into Colossians chapter 3, and my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will just open your eyes to things and the reality and maybe of where you are and maybe where He wants to take you to today, okay, so that your focus may be different this week, so you can hit the ground running tomorrow morning with a different focus, a different reality, because the reality is what is real. It's not reality TV, which is such an oxymoron. Emphasis on moron. Okay, sorry. All right. So, the key verse that we've kind of focused in on over the last three weeks now, okay, is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, which says, all Scripture is inspired by God. Who's it inspired by? It's inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it, uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. Now, who's His people? His people are followers of Jesus Christ, people who have given their lives to the Lord, they've received His forgiveness, and they, they have chosen to follow, follow Jesus with their life follow his word. And so this scripture is what teaches us, and God has given it, uh, given it to us. Uh, it's been inspired by the Holy Spirit, and it will teach us what is true and right every single day of our lives. So the big idea this morning is to choose to live the truth, to choose to live it. We'll talk a little bit more about this as we kind of dig in here a little bit, but to choose to live it. We have a choice every day in terms of how we're going to live, don't we? I mean, sometimes we don't want to wake up to that reality, but it is true that we have a choice in what attitude we're going to have. We have a choice in what focus we're going to have. We have a choice how we're going to respond. They just make me so mad. Ever said that? (laughs) Right? But really, don't, you know, we have feelings that rise up, but aren't we making a choice? I don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it sometimes, but that is the reality. So here, let's jump in. Colossians 3, starting at verse 1, says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, time out, Colossians 2.12 talks about us being buried with Christ, our sinful nature, and raised to new life with Christ. And so here, Paul is just jumping in here, since, you might read another translation, therefore, and we always ask, why is that, what is that there for, right? That's why we, okay. So here it's since, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you, have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. I'm going to say this again. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and its wicked deeds. Put on the new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free, Christ is all that matters, and He lives in all of us. 
Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love. Someone say love. love. Clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Lord, thank you for your word today. Lord, it is rich. It is, it is full. God, it is challenging. And Lord, you want it to get deep within us. God, you don't want it to stay inside of us, Lord. You want to change us from the inside out. And so, Lord, do that today as we focus on your word. Lord, Holy Spirit, we just ask, God, that you would craft this message, Lord, for every person here today. Lord, you know what they're walking through. You know what life is for them right now. And so, God, we just ask, Lord, that you would do the supernatural. Do it in their lives today, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Um, how do we live the truth is where we're going today. How do we live the truth? And the first thing we're told in that very first verse is to set our minds on things above. Set our minds on things above. We, we all have trouble focusing. You know, we, we, you know they diagnose ADD and ADHD and, and, and those things are real. Um, but I think that as a culture, we have become more ADD. <laughs> um, you know, it used to be when, you know, when I was working in the church world oh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, if you had a five-minute video, that was too long. We were talking in staff meeting this week, and a minute and a half was too long. Why is that? You know, you're like, eh, you know, what's next, what's next? You know, we, we, we just have constant changes going on, and, and we've got to keep, we got to keep moving. And so here it is when there's a reality that God has for us, and here Scripture is telling us what this reality is, and the enemy wants us to walk around like, you know, Christians on crack, probably not a good thing, all right? And, you know, we just, hello, we just, and here... Scripture brings a focus to us, set, set your mind on things above, on things above. Paul is like a good coach, you know, we were at a football game yesterday, Drew's playing football and it was ugly, it didn't go good. And so at the end of the game, the end of the game, the coach is kind of laying into him and everything and so here, here the, the coach lays into him and right at the, the very end, what do they do? They all get in a huddle. You all get in a huddle, and what does the coach say? How do y'all feel? And they're like, fired up. How do y'all feel? Fired up. And I'm thinking, they do not feel fired up right now. <laughs> you know, in the army, it was the same way. Get motivated. You know? There's a certain reality here. Paul, like a good coach, says, look, I know that the reality you're living isn't always what you like. But set your mind on things above. There is a reality that you can't see fully every blessing and every detail, but it is yours. It's like an inheritance that you're going to receive. You already have it, but you don't. So you're walking in a reality of, I don't have an inheritance, but you have an inheritance. It's already there, and that's how it is with our relationship with the Lord and the blessings of God. You may not be walking in the fullness of everything, but you're walking in the fullness of everything because you are a child of the King of kings and the Lord of lords who cares deeply about you. He knows where you're walking. He knows what's happening in your life. He has not left you. He will never leave you or forsake you. He's not abandoned you. 
So there's a reality. There's a reality that you're not living at times, that I'm not living at times. And Paul, like a good coach, is saying, set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. The supernatural has happened in your life. Let's get focused, people. Let's get focused. doesn't mean ignore the realities that you're walking through, but it means look to your source. He is the one. He is the one that can calm the waters. He is the one who brings hope when you need it. He is the one who brings peace and joy and comfort. He's the one that brings you finances when you need it. He's the one that gives you the job when you need it. He is your source. Set your mind on things above. And so we're reading verse 1, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, have you been raised to new life with Christ? If you have made Jesus the Lord of your life, then this is reality for you. This right here is reality because it's truth. It's what we're talking about. Since you've been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life, your real life is hidden with Christ in God. It is reality for you. It is your real life. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Everything that is promised in Scripture is yours. It's your reality and it's your not yet all at the same time. So Paul says, set your mind on things above. Look up. Your home is not here. Your home is eternal. This is a speed bump. This is just a rest stop. That's all it is. There is an eternity that God has for you. And since you have Jesus in you, he has given you new life, a new perspective, new desires every day. He has raised you with Christ. You're living in a different reality. And so Paul is saying, focus on the reality that is true because of Christ, not on the things around you and the things of this world that distract us. What the enemy wants to do to us is distract us. Hebrews 13, 14 says, For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. It's like camping. I hate it. I hate camping. We never went camping. My parents are here today. I'm so glad to have them here. But we never went camping. Any camping experience I had was, was somebody else. Thank you. I hate camping. <laughs> but, but you know that camping is like, it's like a, a, it's just a short stay, you know? You're not out there landscaping, right? Let's make it beautiful. You're only there for a couple days. That's what this, this life is. It is a couple day journey in light of eternity. God has so much more, so we are to focus on that. On that, 1 John 5, 11 and 12 says, And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son or have God's Son does not have life. This eternal life is through Christ, and it is available to all of us. Matthew 6, 19 through 21, once again, just trying to bring our focus on the eternal, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. We were made for eternity. Well, I don't feel like it, Pastor Andy. There are days, there are days when this guy right here is like, it'd be a really good day for you to come back, God. <laughs> I'm sure you've had them as well, right? You're like, today would be good. This day right here, if Andy had his way, now. 
Because we've all been there. And here's the deal. We come back to God's word, which is truth, and we fix our eyes on God, on heaven, on the eternal, not the temporary, because all this is going away. It's all going away. We were made for eternity. So repeat after me. This is only temporary. This is only temporary. You're going to have to remind yourself of this over and over and over and over again as long as you are breathing. Because the enemy wants to keep us right here on the obstacles and the circumstances, the things that are right in front of our face to get us off track. This is only temporary. So how do we live the truth? The next thing is we live dead. Now that's confusing. Right? Uh, live dead? Pastor Andy says live dead. Does that make a lick of sense? Live dead. Am I alive or am I dead? Live dead. This is hard to do. We are to live dead to the sin lurking inside of us. How many would be honest and say, you know, I got some sin lurking inside of me? You know what I'm saying? We all have things that are lurking inside of us. It's almost like at times, like those old cartoons, I feel like I got some devil ears that like pop up, you know, every once in a while, and I'm like, no, 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 that's not good. You ever have thoughts all of a sudden, you're like, that is not good. You have to have a conversation with yourself, right, where you have a thought towards somebody, and you're literally having a conversation with yourself, like somebody would think you were crazy, as you're going that is not good. That is unacceptable, Andy. There is sin lurking inside of us. And so Colossians 3, 5 through 10, so put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. It's in past tense because of the reality of your relationship with Jesus Christ. You used to do these things when your life was part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. So, as I'm reading this, it made me think of Cain and Abel. Because if you remember the story of Cain and Abel, they brought, they brought gifts to God, well... Cain, his gift wasn't acceptable. You know, it was the first parent experience. This is unacceptable. Every parent knows this line, don't you? This is unacceptable. This is what God said. This is unacceptable. So Cain gets mad at his brother. He gets mad. And here's the Lord having this conversation with Cain. He says, why are you so angry? It's Genesis 4, verses 6 through 7. says, the Lord asked Cain, why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. Very similar. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. 
So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. And I, I've just got this picture in my mind of the enemy lurking in your life, hoping that you let sin rule in your life today. Just lurking, waiting. And Paul, like a good coach, again, says this was how it was. This is not your reality now. So live in your reality, which is Christ. This further challenge to live dead, which is hard for us to get our heads around, right? 1 John 2, 15 through 17, do not love the world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world craves only, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our accomplishments and possession, or our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away. Someone say fading away. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. It's interesting, and this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. Everything that you crave right now. Lunch. Right? The things that are so, you know, there's like, there's like this drive to to get and to do, and sometimes you don't even know why you have it. Why must my lawn look better than their lawn? The battle of the lawns. My neighbor has a really nice lawn. I've given up. Okay. All this craving, all this striving, it'll fade away, bringing us back to the realities of heaven. And so we have to come back to, I am dead to these things because I have chosen Christ. I am following Jesus Christ with my life, and so I am dead to the evil things lurking inside of me. Because Jesus is in me. Do you, do you realize that? It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So no matter where you are or what you're doing or what sin is enticing you at the time that Christ is with you, he's with you and he longs to help you and he's waiting for you to choose him, to trust him. The Holy Spirit is right there. Choose. Choose Him and remind yourself, I'm dead to sin because Jesus died. So I could be dead to sin and alive to Him. So how do we live the truth? We're going to get dressed up. That's this next one. Get dressed up. I don't know what kind of images that brings to your mind. I hated family photos growing up <clears throat> because we had to get dressed up. It wasn't the family photos, it was getting dressed up. And so like even today when we're talking about going to get family photos, I feel my blood pressure rising because <laughs> I'm like, what does this mean? <laughs> it's like stress from, from growing up taking, you know, pictures and getting your hair combed just right and all the stress that went along with that. But this we're talking about really getting dressed right here because we've all put on the wrong clothes at some time or another. I can think of a day when I, wrote, I wore two different shoes all day and didn't know it. You know, I thought things felt a little off, but wasn't quite sure what it was. And then I got into the light and realized, oh, I've got two different shoes on. I am an idiot, okay, and I've been an idiot all day. Okay, so I can think of coming to church in shorts on a Sunday night 
And all of a sudden, I felt the eyes. I wasn't dressed right, and I didn't know it. Here's the deal. We are to put on the right clothes every day. <laughs> you can wear shorts to church. It's okay. <clears throat> but we're talking about godly character here. It's like putting on something. It's like making that choice. I'm going to put on Christ today. I'm going to live in the reality of Christ today. I'm going to put on godly character today. So 3.12 says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves. You must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. How we respond to people around us matters, and oh, how we blow it. And I know South County is perfect, and you don't ever respond in a negative fashion. I know the reality is sometimes and the furthest thing from our mind is compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. But Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, are to live differently. Hopefully this is not news to you. Hopefully this is not, are you serious? No. The world is watching us. They're watching to see are they living in the reality of what it means to be a Christ follower? And they don't even know why they're watching us. But the truth is the Spirit of God is inside of you, and it calls us to a higher level. And we are to put on godly character every day. Christians are to live differently. The truth is in us. Jesus Christ is truth, and He is in us. Do you believe it? He's in you. He's in you. So we're encouraged to put on, like, right clothing, to put it on. So Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, which is such a good message today. Oh, God help us. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. In Peter, 1 Peter 2, 11 and 12, it says, Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. Here's that message. This is temporary. You're just passing through. And so the challenge is, are you putting on godly character? Are you living the truth, living godly truth? This is hard for all of us. You are going to make a million and one mistakes here. So if you made one on the way to church, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you're like, oh boy. It's heavy. It's interesting to me that the next one we'll look at here, how do we live the truth, is to choose to forgive. To choose to forgive. It's just interesting to me that all the things that we just talked about and all of a sudden Paul switches to forgiveness. Like, oh, by the way, in case what I just told you, you don't live out and you have a few things that you've done and some people have done to you, let's forgive. Let's choose to forgive. And I know that no one here today has any problem with forgiveness. No one here 
judges anybody or has grudges. You don't like my sarcasm, do you? Because the reality is, if you're breathing, and thank God you are, we don't need an ambulance coming here today. You probably have some bumps. You have some bruises. You have some people who have offended you, some people who have wronged you, sometimes very very, very severely. People who have betrayed you. In Colossians 3, 13 through 14, make allowance for each other's faults. Sometimes you're reading scripture and you even have a conversation with yourself. Are you serious, God? Did you really, did you really mean that? Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone, someone say anyone, who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself, here's that again, Woo! putting on love, clothe yourself with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Put on godly character, but Pastor Andy, they stole money from me. Pastor Andy, they never returned my hedge trimmer. Pastor Andy, but, 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 Pastor Andy, you wouldn't believe what they said about me. You wouldn't believe what they posted about me. You wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe. I believe it. But I also believe this. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave forgave you, so you must forgive others. This is interesting because I think it was Pastor Daniela one one day when we were talking about this particular thing, and and it was something where you know you know we expect grace in shovelfuls to us, but we want to give it out in spoonfuls to others, right? I want forgiveness. Gimme, 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 gimme. But you got to work for it, buddy. Right? Sometimes we live like that. When what Scripture said is, you must, you must forgive. You must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. First mm. Peter 4.8 says this, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Matthew 6, 14 and 15, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. This hurts. Because we're like, whoa, wait a minute. (laughs) That's not cool, God. When we put Christ first, or we put on Christ every day, we're depending upon Jesus and we're depending upon His grace to forgive. And it even came up, well, how many times do I forgive? Is seven times good? Wait a minute. Is 70 times seven is what they were told? 70 times seven? Now, the mathematicians in the room were like, oh, you know, they've already got it. But this was total hyperbole. Hyperbole. <laughs> hyperbole. In other words... This was just an extreme example to show you never stop forgiving. You never stop forgiving. This is God's will for you, that you and I, you and me, that we will never stop forgiving. How many of you just, that's, you be honest, that's hard to swallow. 
It's very challenging. But by God's grace, we can do it. By God's grace, that person that you're holding the grudge against that did it like 25 years ago, that person that's no longer living, by God's grace, you can release that and be free. Because you're the one that's really in prison. They've moved on. We never stop forgiving. How do we live this truth? By God's grace. We can only do this by the power of the Holy Spirit. But focusing on this, on His reality, set your mind on things above. Set your minds on things above, not this earth. There are realities I, I encourage you, there's so much depth to this chapter. We cannot even, we, we've dug a little bit. But I encourage you this week, keep digging. Keep digging into this. Because when we, when we are living in the reality that is already there, because we've trusted our life with Christ, everything changes. Everything changes. The the sin that's lurking at the door, the enemy who wants to, to distract us and get us, get us off kilter, who wants to get us just to respond in venomous ways to those around us. Because he's active, right? The, the enemy wants to take you out. Because he knows if he takes you out, he's got your family, he's got the people around you. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. Live in the reality of Christ. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. I can't tell you enough. Christ is in you. Christ is changing you. Christ is renewing you. He's making you new constantly as you give yourself to him. Every day as you choose to put on Christ, as you choose to live in his reality. God, today I, I wake up and I give myself to you. I choose to live in your reality today. I choose to put on godly character today. I choose to respond to people in a way that honors you. I choose to forgive others. I choose to live a life of godly character. And you're telling God, God, I can only do this by your power that is at work within me. But I choose today to live in this reality. We have an enemy that goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to, give, to get you to live in darkness, to live in prison cells. And God's word and his Holy Spirit are like, come on up, live in freedom. Live in freedom. You, you even felt it this morning as we were worshiping. Pedro's up here just like a, like a great worship leader does, saying, focus on this reality. Focus on the, the river. Focus on the Holy Spirit that's with you. Keep focusing on him. Keep focusing on him. Keep giving the reality of him the focus of your life. Do not miss out today. Do not go home or go back to the prison Live in freedom. See, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or Gentile, slave or free, barbaric, uncivilized. It doesn't matter where you've come from. What matters is Christ. That is your reality, church. That is your reality. That is truth. And when the world says, don't focus on the truth, his word still comes right back to you. Focus on me. Set your mind on things above. So where are you going to live today? That's the question. That's the challenge for you. That's the challenge for me. Where are we going to choose to live today? I hope that you will join me in saying, I focus on your reality today, God. I focus on your reality. As the worship band comes up today, we've got to get in the river
Let's celebrate that today. The river that flows. We used to sing old songs. Talking about this river. There is a river that flows from God above. There is a reality, church, that God has for you. The enemy wants to hold you down, and I, as your pastor today, am asking you, get in the river. Get in the river. Maybe you've, you've not said yes to Christ with your life, and maybe that's what you need to do today. To receive that forgiveness for your sins, that everything is erased And to say, Jesus, I'm going to follow you with my life. That you are the way, the truth, and the life. You might be here this morning and you might be like, I don't even know what all that means yet. But I recognize God's spirit here today and I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose to follow you, Jesus. I'm going to put my trust in you and the truth that you are and that you have for me. Maybe that's you today. For others of you, you just need to get in the river. You need to get free. You need to let loose a little bit. And it's not a song. It's not, you know, for five minutes at the end of service. There is a reality that God has. He wants you to recognize, to recognize there is freedom in him. That as you set your mind on things above, the things of this world will begin to fade away. Heavenly Father, thank you so much today for your word. Thank you for your truth. Lord, and as we focus on you, the creator of all things, God, we know that there are realities that you have for us. And God, I pray that you would set us free today. Set us free to worship you. Set us free to say yes to you. Every person that doesn't know you today and hasn't made that decision, help them to choose you today. If that's you today and you need to make a choice to follow Jesus, just say, Jesus, I trust you with my life. I make you the Lord of my life. I choose to follow you today. Maybe you're someone who has come to church for a long time, but you're not living in the freedom that God has for you. It's time to get free. And so Holy Spirit, have your way this morning as we celebrate the freedom that we have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you